Good morning and good afternoon and good evening, depending on which time zone you're um, joining us today. Um, a really warm welcome from uh, Market Harborough in uh, Leicestershire, the United Kingdom. We're really pleased to welcome you this morning and thank you for joining and registering for our webinar. Um, looking at the registrations, they represent six different continents today. So thank you. We really do appreciate um, appreciate you getting involved and engaging with us. And I think the six different continents really reflects the diversity that we have within um, Brookhouse College and Brookhouse College Football Academy. So the purpose of today is really to, um, to give you some updates, to give you some information as to what is going on to really let you know things that you would probably find out if you were able to come and visit us and we really um, are accepting people to come and visit us in person for familiarization trips but for now here's some general updates so what to expect then um, from our session this morning well a we're not going to keep you really really long because we know that everybody's busy and we know that everybody has lots of commitments online throughout the day um, we want to um, be brief and give you an overall introduction. Giles will be joining us, our uh, Managing Director, Giles Williams, and he'll give um, a general school update in terms of the new investments and the new resources that we have on board. Um, Rachel, um, who is our Director of Partnerships, she will be talking about high performance learning, this new, innovative, exciting project that is about well, just launched and how that will impact on students' learning journeys with us. Wiley, you will know as our director of summer school and also from marketing. And he has been running an absolutely fabulous enrichment program. And he'll talk to you about that and including another project of ours, which we're, uh, we've just launched, which is the 8 billion ideas. Sarah, our director of admissions, you will all know Sarah. Sarah Doy, she'll be talking to you about admissions in general, but mainly how, how we've been admitting people and what we're doing to support um, student applications and student arrivals during and, and, and post-pandemic. And then Giles is going to give us um, a rundown again on what it's like in the UK after a pandemic and uh, how we're re responding to um, each piece of news and making sure we have a, a welcoming, safe college for your students to apply. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Giles. Giles Williams is joining us now. Morning, Giles. Hi. Um, over to you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And uh, as Carolyn said, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to talk to you uh, via, uh, albeit uh, uh, not quite face to face, but uh, but via the wonders of the Internet. And basically, I, I wanted to start with a, a, a request and, uh, and a plea, really, uh, for, 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 for you to continue to work with us uh, and work with us as effectively as you do on account of the fact that I think for young people, this period of time is absolutely critical. And arguably, education and educational environment have never been more important than they are today. There was a, a piece of research recent, recently commissioned by uh, a number of private schools, including Eton College and uh, a number of state schools uh, and a number of educational trusts who who, who came together to, to put together a piece of, of research on the impacts of the pandemic. And, and uh, I'm afraid to say that, that, the, that the report has, has really highlighted what we all feared would might be the case with the pandemic. And that was that it was going to have had a, a very significant impact on children's development. So th to that extent, they are worrying times because we the first research is showing that the mental health and the mental well-being of our younger generation have suffered as a result of missed schooling and as a result of levels of anxiety and concern growing as a as a result of the awful COVID 
pandemic that the world has experienced. The report has highlighted higher levels of anxiety, higher levels, and, and this report's available online. You could you could look it up um, either via the Eaton website or 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 as an independent piece of research. You, and the, the, the I suppose the headlines from that but from that piece of work really demonstrate the impact that the last two what what is now two years have have had on young people missed days of schooling uh anxiety uh, the, the separation from friends uh conducting lives in a virtual environment all of these types of things are are are, are, are highlighted in the report so 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 we know that there's an issue and uh, and, that, and it, i think as with anything the first part of solving the issue is recognizing the issue but but positively we as educators and and we as uh, as representatives of the, of colleges we we we've got an opportunity to do something about it but i think it behoves our generation and i'm 47 now so i'm, I'm probably a, a generation of parents i suppose rather than grandparents but but I think it's our generation. I know a number of you will be in your 20s, 30s, 40s. But really, we have a responsibility to, to try to get this right for the children, for the children of today who will be the, the young adults uh, uh, and university students of tomorrow. So with that in mind, the, uh, ourselves as a management and a leadership team at the college have sat down and, and and tried to plot a course through a, a period of recovery I, I suppose as we as we look at the the, the pretty uh, shattering impacts of of what has preceded where we are now um and and, and we've taken that responsibility very seriously um, we have looked at ways in which we can help young children to get back on their feet and ways in which we can help them to establish a level of well-being which maybe they haven't been lucky enough to enjoy in the last 18 months to, to two years. And, and in your own roles as college representatives and, and, and with your own passions for education and your own passions for seeing young people do well, I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll want to, to be a part of, of the journey that, that we're on because there's, there's, there's nothing nothing more important at stake you know those of you've got children i've got two children one's seven one's five and and um, and and i'm mindful that every day in a school environment we're working to make give them more opportunities and to to try to heal some of the difficulties that that, that the children have experienced in the last two years when let's face it the world has been completely turned on its head and who would have thought that we wouldn't be able to socialize we wouldn't be able to interact as we normally do that we'd be wearing face masks that we'd be having a relatively sort of uncharted vaccination programs that we would be relying never more than before on our leaders for guidance that we would have travel restrictions that th these things which were just completely completely un un unthinkable uh you know two and a half years ago um, and, and 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 obviously, I, I'm, I'm mindful in talking to you that that various sectors of of our uh, industry have have suffered terribly. And uh, I'm thinking particularly about the English language and travel sector, which which has 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 had the the the, the curtailment of international travel has had huge impacts for school owners, for school staff, uh, as as people have, have not come to the UK and, and my thoughts are with everybody in the sector at this difficult time. In in the case of Brook House, we, we, we've been lucky, thanks to the support of people like yourselves, that we've been able to to weather this this difficult storm and and our student numbers on roll have, have stayed reasonably constant. I, I'm sure as a marketing department and an admissions, admissions department, we would be massively, massively grateful to the to the huge support of, of our staff here at Brookhouse. And I'm thinking about everybody from the housekeeping team to the residential team, to the catering team, uh, to the school management that, that, that have worked so tirelessly to, 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 to keep the school on track. Uh, and so in, in terms of our current position, 
uh, we, the, our school is, is pretty full and we're able to offer deliver a, 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 a full curriculum and our football program has been able to uh, re-establish itself after the football lockdown of uh, of 2020 uh, has been able to, to sort of to go from strength to strength which is uh, uh, which I'm pleased to say has has led to our under 19 elite team currently standing undefeated in December and our under 16 elite team also standing undefeated in September in December uh, so we've had a, it may be that that our two teams will go undefeated for uh, for a term at elite level which would uh, obviously be very pleasing and would be a a great reflection on the work of the coaches and, and and all the efforts that the staff put in here. So, in terms of recovering from where we are, and and, and it's kind of day one as we try and pick up the pieces from the pandemic. We, I wanted to talk to you about some some work that we've done at the college to and is ongoing at the college to to try to to, to get our children onto a a strong footing and to get our children into a comfortable environment where they can really thrive and flourish uh, as as they may have done five uh, but, but, you know in the, in, in the five ten preceding years but before the the the, the disastrous ravages of of, of covid-19 um it's, so the college has got a number of projects that i wanted to tell you about because i, I think they're interesting and I, and I think they improve our educational experience the the, the conversion of the former Angel Hotel will be completed by Easter and that will see the building being renamed DJW House in memory of my late father uh, and we'll see the, the the completion of the accommodation sector of, of the building and we'll also see a new dining room in the, which is taking over the entire downstairs sector of, of the, it'll be familiar to those of you who've who've been lucky enough to visit Market Harbour, but the, the so the ground floor of the of the former hotel building will be our new dining room. Uh, at the project is a, a cost of over a million pounds. So I'm hoping that we'll get a really, really top uh, new catering uh, and entertainment facility. Uh, this feeds into our drive to improve the nutrition of our students, the diet of our students, to improve the the, the the way that I suppose the lifestyle of our children in terms of giving a wide range of food options, healthy options, occasionally of course some comfort food for when days haven't worked out how might one wish wish them to be. So we, we, the the new dining facility is the plans have all been signed off, uh, the construction's ongoing. And we're hoping that we're all going to be eating in there and uh, and socialising in there come April. The 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 work on the boarding accommodation is 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 an ongoing process. Uh, the, the 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 common room we're hoping will be completed next summer. Um, we 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 uh, we we have a obviously have a development plan, uh, but from the Easter holidays we should see the our children be able to dine in the new facility, which as you can see from the mood boards on the screen, is an attractive uh, facility, open, airy, bright, happy, we hope, and, uh, and, a, and, a, and a, an excellent new up-to-date state-of-the-art uh, sort of restaurant and cafe option for, for the children. Um, you can see at the bottom of the screen that the the four C's of creative, curious, collaborative, caring, which are taglines which which our new principal, uh, Mr. Ian Smith, has 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 singled out as qualities which we're attempting to to to, to foster in 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 the in the children moving forward after the difficult two years that we've all experienced. So as we prepare the generation Z of the generation X, Y, Z of, 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 uh, of where we are today for the future, where, uh, where things are, 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 are as ever slightly uncertain, we hope that we can, we can fo focus on, on those skills in terms of making children creative so they can deal with the challenges of, of, of the future, curious so they can not be frightened of, 
of new situations, but they can engage with new situations and and find out new information that will prepare them well for the future. Uh, collaborative so that they can work together because teamwork's never going to be more important. And uh, I probably don't need to say any more about, about caring because uh, kindness and looking after each other is, is obviously of paramount importance at the minute. Uh, you can see a picture of, of, of Mr. Smith uh, above uh, at the top of the page. Um, Mr. Smith, who joined us in August, who's been driving the future forward agenda, which is in terms of preparing children for the recovery process from the pandemic uh, and, uh, and, and, and in enriching the children's lives with the skills and qualities that they're going to need for, for this post-COVID world, whatever that, that quite looks like. Uh, you'll see sat with Mr Smith in the photo is a, a young football coach, a young lady called Kirsty Lynette, who was our first female football coach who joined the team in September. Uh, Kirsty was a former professional footballer with Leicester City and Liverpool amongst other teams. And uh, Kirsty ha has, has joined us as part of our initiative to, to drive recruitment in terms of girls football and prioritise girls football in our agenda here at Brook House. So we, we've been moving very much towards a, a programme of, of, of working hard to uh, improve the coaching, the quality in terms of our boys football provision, uh, to, to constantly drive the standards of coaching, the, the standards of, 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 of play higher, and also to engage more with what we hope is a growing girls football market as the women's game continues to develop around the world. Uh, there's a picture also there of, a, of our resurfaced 3G football pitch. Uh, the the old uh, 3G pitch was overdue a, 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 a recarpeting, uh, and that has been carried out at the start of this term. Uh, I don't think it overly affected the children and their playing. The boys played a bit more on grass than they might have done otherwise, um, which is no bad thing. And luckily, the weather was kind in September, so. Uh, the boys were able to play um, on grass and the the pitch has been completed. So we now have the two showcase 4G pitches available to us on a, on a daily basis. And the boys are obviously uh, benefiting from that provision. The, the college Wi-Fi has been absolutely uh, sort of uh, ripped up and started again by our uh, college COO, Mark Lund, who has worked on... Uh, we we basically yeah, worked on on increasing the the, the effectiveness and the, and the speed and uh, bandwidth of of the Wi-Fi, which is available throughout the college, uh, with the provision of a of a hardwired line into the main campus building and then trunks off that to various buildings. Uh, I, I I think that obviously the proof of the puddings in the eating and whenever as with IT, there's always going to be. Uh, sort of little bumps in the road, but but I think that that the provision of college internet is now drastically improved, uh, which is obviously important in this age of blended learning. And uh, we've obviously tried to 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 keep some of the best things that we discovered during COVID and uh, the sort of the COVID keepers as they've been as they've been hashtagged. So in terms of so so we realised during COVID that we could drive forward our IT provision. And we could we could we could improve our, our our internet accessibility for all the students, which is probably never more important. Um, in terms of building works, whilst I uh, I mentioned earlier DJW House, which will be completed uh, in, at Easter, and you can see a picture of that uh, on the up on the top right there of the screen, uh, which will house the catering facility, which we're we're all looking forward to. It's uh, it's been a big project. It's uh, involved a lot of meetings, as these things do, and uh, and I think the end result will be will be worth it. Uh, you, you could also see a couple of artist impressions there, of uh, which is the interior designer who we instruct has been working alongside the head of boarding and the estates manager Gary Brown, head of boarding Leo Constantine, to. To re, re refresh, rework uh, some of our more historic boarding accommodation, and 
that will be online in January for the arrival of our new children in January. So we're excited in that we have a new uh, interior design scheme, which will be which will be played out throughout the the, the reworked, renovated, uh, reconstituted accommodation on the main site. Uh, and obviously, we're looking forward to welcoming our new children in January. Uh, the the college has also this year in, increased its interaction with uh, local football club Leicester City through uh, through through uh, its hospitality arrangements. And the college now has a a box at the King Power Stadium where we entertain visitors, where we. I suppose court or, uh, or or encourage foster our relationships with football clubs, and you can see our principal Ian Smith with a group of guests there at the stadium. Um, we, we 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 try to 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 use that facility to to to, to put us on, on on the map in terms of our liaison with football clubs, and which is obviously vital for the progression of children going forward. So. The you can see it's an exciting time. We've we've been busy. I know. I know that. Uh, uh, in fact, I th we've probably never been more busy actually um, in trying to uh, deal with uh, inquiries and deal with uh, the implications on a health front and on an immigration front of COVID. Uh, deal with logistics associated with airport pickups and airport drop offs. We've we've had a fantastically busy time. I, I I hope that you'll be pleased with the results as you continue to partner with us. It's a challenging time, of course, but it's also an exciting time. And I do feel that 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 after Christmas, uh, hopefully, the worst of the the dreadful last two years will be behind us, and it's with that new spirit that we can move forward in 2022. And uh, just to finish with where I started from, I. You know, I, I would ask and beg and plead for your assistance and support with all of the students and all of the applications that you kindly make to the college because there's never been a more important time for the for the generation that uh, of, of of tomorrow. And uh, I'm sure the students in due course will be really grateful for for every aspect of assistance that you could give them. Um, so that's it from me in terms of future forward, in terms of a sort of state of the nation. Uh, uh, address and uh, I hope I've been able to to offer you some insight and some reassurance uh, as to that the college is moving in the right direction. Um, I'm now going to hand you over to Rachel Kane, who will discuss some augmentation of the rigor of the academic provision that we offer here at the college. So over to you, Rachel. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, thank you, Giles. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I am delighted to be here today. And um, as Giles mentioned, the new principal, Mr. Uh, Ian Smith, has um, implemented the um, HPL or High Performance Learning Journey for the college. Now, this is an exciting um, process. And I think the students will they will benefit from all aspects of their life, whether it's in um, academic, whether it's in the classroom based, uh, pastorally and or whether it's on the football pitch and plus extracurricular. So it's a, a process, a flexible framework, which can be used in all aspects of uh, individual's life um, for the students. So we're really excited to start this process, which we did in September, and it's now um, running through all aspects of the college. Um, so the process really is to get the most out of the students through this flexible framework framework um, and the out the uh, well the end result basically will mean that students will thrive they will become overcome problems whether it's academic whether it's personal or pastoral and they will become a stronger more um, rounded individual with lots of skills and how to overcome problems as well so it's a wonderful program we're really excited about it um, and as you can see on the um, slide there are some icons now the first icon in light blue it says VAA so this is pastorally. This is to help students develop their skills and values. So it's values, attitudes and attributes to give them to give them everyday skills to overcome barriers, problems, any challenges that um, may come ahead in the classroom through the learning process or in the football pitch. 
any aspect of their life. So this will help them grow and get confidence within themselves. And hopefully, you know, in the future, they will have less problems. They will have the skills on how to deal with any issues that may arise. So skills. Um, so a title under this would be empathetic. So understanding each other, working collaborative, concerns for society and their peers and being a confident individual. Um, and then next to this is agile. So inquiring, having an active mind, creative, enterprising, um, risk taking, learning how to challenge uh, situations. Um, so um, that's giving them an agile mind. And the last one is hard working. So hard working applies every aspect of a, a student's life. Um, again, whether it's in the classroom, pastorally, um, with friends, um, um, extracurricular, on the football pitch. So hard working, practice things, perseverance and resilience. So we are um, we are training the students to acquire these skills um, throughout their lives and be able to use them and be confident within themselves. So moving over to the next icon, which stands for ACP. Uh, that is advanced cognitive performance characteristics. So this is the thinking skills. Um, so the first icon is meta thinking. So reflecting on their own thinking, using a wide range of approaches, maybe self-regulating, um, but in a holistic manner. So this is, again, it's thinking skills on how to develop further, whether, again, in the classroom or on the football pitch. It could be all aspects of the life. Now, the next icon is linking. So linking um, past experiences, um, coming to self-conclusions, being able to analyze situations so they can um, become, well, develop the correct uh, result, have an idea on, on to pro uh, proceed further and to grow. After this, you can um, analyze and analyzing. So analyzing is logical or critical thinking giving them as students the skills on how to deduct um, with problems, uh, breaking things down um, with a suitable approach. So, um, and being able to overcome problem tasks and finding solutions. So analyzing situations and become, uh, getting to the right results. So this is giving the students skills, um, again, uh, multi-purpose skills. And then creating. So creating means, um, intellectual playfulness, learning how to um, come up with different solutions, but in a more creative way, making mistakes, growing as an individual. Um, and then the last icon is realizing. So this is giving the skills on that it becomes almost automatic. So once they've come through the process, they're not thinking, oh, I need to do this. It comes naturally. So we're very, very excited that our, uh, we're gonna help the students with all these wonderful skills to high performance learning, which basically means that they will can become the best person they can be. Whatever, whatever stage they're at now, they will grow in all aspects of their lives. And our job is to provide them with the skills to overcome any problems and to excel and have a wonderful future, not just in the classroom, but as a person as a whole. And this is a holistic approach. So it, it, the students may not necessarily know they're doing it because the teachers are gonna be are highly trained and the academic staff um, um, and the coaches to implement this in a nice discreet way. So the students probably don't even know they're on the kind of HPL high performance learning program. So we're really excited about the journey. Um, and the last icon at the end is uh, thinking skills, fire up for learning. So it's making students excited about their future. So we are really, really um, excited and enthusiastic to be delivering high performance learning at Brook House. Um, and I, I am sure you will see the, uh, the students progress uh, they will be excited about learning and all aspects of their lives. So that's just a basic summary of what high performance learning is. So thank you for listening to me. I'm going to hand over now to my colleague, uh, Wari Wright. Thanks, Rachel. So good morning, everybody. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a new project we've been focusing on here at Brookhouse College about the enrichment programme. <clears throat> And as Giles was saying earlier about we're helping uh, the future young adults develop Worcester here at Brookhouse. And Rachel was talking about 
and HPL and it being holistic so that students almost didn't know that they were learning or enriching themselves. And that's what we're almost trying to do with the, the new enrichment program. So college directors have given a very generous or a very large budget to be able to implement this this year. Now you see on the screen some of the, the enrichment ideas we've already started to implement this year. You've got ideas of uh, cooking and those girls uh, then also then sold the cupcakes and raised money for charity, chess competitions and entering the um, you know, county-wide competitions here in England. The first cohort of students completed their emergency first aid courses. Um, you've got the creative arts, um, the music, the band club have has gone on very well so far this year. They've even went to a local recording studio um, and uh, recorded some songs that you can uh, have a look on our social media, very good. But we also um, are looking at taking the students to other events, to lectures, um, uh, around England as well. You can see there a group of uh, the Brookhouse staff and students with uh, Foreign Secretary Liz Truss. So it's about opening themselves up, not to just here in Brookhouse College. Education doesn't have to be limited to a classroom setting. We can learn in the football fields, we can learn um, in lectures and presentations and such like on offer in the country anyway. Now we want to link this all up with, uh, you can see the logo in the corner, 8 billion ideas. And the very uh, kind of motto of 8 billion ideas is that, that the class education is not limited to the classroom. Um, it's a very kind of entre entrepreneurial enterprise kind of led project in that the students are to, um, kind of given skills and encouraged to believe that they can change the world, uh, almost to become a global citizen. And they do this by um, introducing three pillars of learning. First, students are going to be encouraged from January when we introduce this to start in their own business, whether that be a small startup or a charity-based fundraising business. We also want them to look at um, the future careers, the career passports. So a lot of the students here are very football focused, but it's about making them think, okay, what happens if I don't get into the professional football career playing? What other avenues do I have? And then also for the non-football academy students, what are they looking about for future careers and how do we link them with Rachel, with her UCAS uh, workshops, et cetera, uh, so that they can achieve the, the, the kind of best results, best outcomes for them. And then the last part is about to level up. So that's about identifying them with us, areas where they can improve personally. So, something simple like public speaking skills could be deliver workshops on that. Now, the idea behind the enrichment program, you know, led by 8 billion ideas, is it has to be student led as well, very student focused. What do they want to achieve from this? So already we're also looking at some more enrichment sessions for after the, the winter break, things like uh, sign language. Some students want to start learning British sign language self-defense classes and yoga classes. So it's a very wide and varied program, student-led, but then all linked up with this 8 billion ideas, which fits very comfortably in with the overall aim of becoming a, a HPL center. So that just gives you an, an overview of where we are in terms of enrichment, very new and exciting project, a lot of positive feedback so far from the students, and it's gonna be interesting to see how it grows over the next uh, next two terms, okay? So there's a, the, an overview for you, and uh, I'm gonna introduce Sarah Doy, who is our Director of Admissions, and she can talk to you about that process just now. So here's Sarah Doy. Thanks very much, bye. Thank you, Wiley. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hello to you all, wherever you may be. Um, first of all, really, I wanted to reiterate Giles's opening uh, words. Um, from the admissions uh, department, thank you so very much for your support over the last 18 months, uh, two years, during these really, really tough times for us all. Um, and really, I'm so pleased to, to share with you that Brook House has successfully retained and enrolled 65 nationalities um, this academic year. Um, and that's throughout that very challenging, changing and complex landscape of the pandemic and all of the travel regulations. Um, and I think that that really is something to celebrate. As a college, we've worked very hard and we continue to work very hard um, with you, our agents, um, our trusted friends and our families 
to make the admissions, the enrolment and the arrival process as smooth as we possibly can um, during these continually challenging times. I think the fact that the college is buoyant and is thriving with diversity is an absolute testament to both uh, ours and yours as agents support for the families um, considering admissions uh, and helping them with enrolment during the last 18 months. Um, and I think looking at our social media pages, they really do represent the positive and flourishing student body that we've got here. Um, and that the environment here is thriving. Um, I think these pictures um, that, that we can see of our students enjoying uh, times in the classroom um, and times in the enrichment program are really exhibiting to our families that education and life at, at Brookhouse College is definitely um, positive and uh, we're fully embracing life again here. I just want to let you know we are still uh, accepting last minute applications for January uh, for all courses. So um, if there is a family that is considering January, um, I'm, I am very happy to talk to you uh, about, about possibilities. And of course, September admissions, uh, that window has already opened and we're in full swing for uh, September 22 admissions. Um, what I would say, if you've got clients that are considering uh, a blended education and football enrollment, we need to move those families uh, forward uh, uh, as soon as possible. Um, our football academy, uh, the reputation has grown to, to such a, a high level now that um, globally we are very much recognised um, and places will become um, limited as we go uh, further through spring. So um, I would hope to be speaking to you uh, after Christmas if you have um, players that want that blended education football enrollment. So in, in terms of admissions, um, just to remind you what we are doing here, um, I think our flexibility at Brookhouse College is something that our agents have come to understand we do really, really well. Um, let's have a look at, at your clients, the families you're introducing to us um, and make all considerations of the applicant. We really want to support you and the family in the decision making. Um, we are continuing to offer our really popular virtual visits. Um, the virtual visits are done with, with a variety of us here at the college. Uh, myself as director of admissions, um, if it's a, a football playing uh, applicant, we're going to be bringing the FA in for that virtual visit. Um, Carolyn, Giles, Rachel, um, Wiley, they all get involved. Um, and yeah, we're offering a real 360. We're giving a lot of information about the college, the environment, academic counselling, um, and really looking at the applicant on a very, very personalised and individual level to make sure that we can offer the right course for that student and that they understand what the offering is and what their educational pathway is going to be with us here at Brookhouse College. So it's a very supportive and personalised approach we're taking in our virtual visits. Um, and back referencing Carolyn in her introduction, in-person visits as well. We have been accepting those um, and we are fully engaged um, with introducing the college, tours, and the opportunity to experience uh, a look into the classrooms and down on the pitch for the football playing applicants. I think one of the, the really big challenges uh, in the decision making for families has been yeah, that ever shifting, changing landscape um, of the testing and travel regulations. Here at Brookhouse College, we are very much um, attempting and I think very successfully to keep all our families and agents up to date with the latest information. Um, so, for example, in the last couple of days since Friday, the UK government have, have made new announcements 
um, and we are communicating these to all our current families and to our prospective uh, families that are coming in January. So what are we doing? We're going to be updating with the UK government travel guidelines uh, and communicating them virtually as soon as they, they happen here in the UK. Um, we are supporting and giving advice to families about how to book the tests. So we are giving the uh, recommended provider um, and giving advice on actually how to book those tests. We're offering, as we always do actually, a really safe and comfortable airport transfer uh, facility for all of our arriving students. I know that, that parents would like to um, arrive with their sons and daughters, uh, particularly the very first time, and that hasn't been possible for everybody this year because of travel restrictions. So I think the next best thing is parents being com comfortable, uh, confident that, um, the college staff who are very used to this, very warm and welcoming, we're picking them up from the airport in our COVID clean and safe uh, vehicles, bringing them directly here to the college and then handing them directly over to the head of boarding, Mr. Leo Constantine um, and his amazing team of residential tutors. We have, and I think this is really important because not all schools and colleges have been offering this, um, quarantine and self-isolation facilities at the college. So we have always throughout the pandemic been able to offer this and we continue to do so. So quarantine for anyone that is traveling into the country. So those from red list countries that are gonna need to go back to being quarantined uh, from January. From everybody else around the world, uh, our under 18 boarding school students coming back into our environment. Uh, we've got a day two test booking uh, and a, a very short isolation period whilst that's been done. That's all happening again in house safely. And it's all under the guidance of a wonderful team of staff here at the college. So we have our nurse, uh, Linda, um, and we have a uh, Wiley, who's been heading up um, with a number of other uh, staff, our, our testing um, and quarantine team looking after our children. So the quarantine, I know it's not the most ideal um, arrival scenario for our students, but we do look after them really well. Uh, hot meals, uh, snacks, anything they need delivered to their room by our team. We're checking on them twice a day in terms of a health check. We've got constant communication avenues for them to be using. Um, and yes, of course, we are allowing them a little bit of exercise and freedom at the appropriate times during the day. So we try and make it um, as, as smooth um, and as quick an experience as possible. Um, post that, COVID vaccinations, um, again, the team here at Brookhouse College have been working really hard since the UK government made the announcement that we were bringing down the vaccination programme and rolling it out uh, to students. So that's part of, of uh, what's going to happen post student arriving if they haven't had vaccinations and the family are wishing them to uh, do that. And I suppose the last thing in, in, in terms and in light of um, the complexities of travel is again that that flexibility so we are approaching uh christmas time now we know that for some countries uh the availability and the pricing of flights um can be very challenging um so we are allowing students that flexibility to uh leave a few days earlier return a few days later just so they can get home and spend it with their families um and do so in the easiest way possible They'll also keep in touch with their studies online the few days that they're missing. So that's all happening here with us. I think, and, and I've heard from our families, we spend a lot of time talking um, to our parents that they have felt really reassured um, by our systems, our processes. Um, and I think it's communication and support they're the most important things uh, that personally I found in an admissions department over the last two years. Um, yeah, 
communication and support, being there uh, at the end of a Zoom, at the end of a phone call, uh, on the email, to reassure them um, about their son and daughter, how things are working and that they're being cared for and all is going to plan. Um, so we continue to do so and hopefully our families continue to feel confident with what we're doing. Um, that's all from me though. Um, I hope very much to be hearing from you uh, over the coming weeks and months uh, regarding applications, uh, as I say, for January and September 22. But to close, I am going to be handing back over uh, to uh, Giles uh, for some closing comments regarding life here in the UK post-pandemic. Thank you, Sarah, and thanks for that update on the situation with our admissions procedures. I, I wanted to close, really, with, with uh, uh, a, a, another request, if I may. Uh, the, the one thing that the, the pandemic has certainly done has, has, has changed people's lives, and uh, we have seen that a certain number of families and, and are relocating to the UK, to support their children in their education and to that extent i know as representatives and as intermediaries that that causes more work uh, for you because uh, we're now looking at families who might be looking at rental accommodation rental situations who may be looking at uh, uh, the, the, the process of re-establishing themselves in a new country with immigration requirements and and things like that we, we 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 now have over 10 families that have relocated to market harborough in order to support their children and their children have become day students so there is a familiar pattern developing there with families feeling that 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 they're going to uh, find themselves or, or 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 relocate themselves to to an area where they feel they can best support their children i'm pleased to be able to say that much of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis at the school is 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 currently uh pretty pr pretty normal if 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 you could use that word these days uh the student council is active in its work you can see a, a group of children there who are involved in our active enrichment scheme working to empower the children to to help each other, to to help themselves as they as they embark on co-curricular activities, supporting their the academic thrust of what they're they're doing here in the UK. We've been able to play football fixtures throughout uh, this term. So, whereas previously we've 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 had situations where we haven't been uh, where where we've had enforced curtailment of football activities, that hasn't happened, and as a result football fixtures have taken place and also football trials have taken place and the college's strong reputation and strong history in terms of placing students into assisting students to to gain professional contracts has 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 re remained uh, healthy and we were lucky enough over the summer that a number of our children progressed onto professional clubs in Scotland in Portugal in Belgium, uh, and we are lucky that we're able to to have those showcase games and to give the children the opportunity to shine with professional scouts from professional clubs, uh, watching watching on as our boys and girls now continue to develop. Sarah mentioned that the the vaccine rollout, which continues apace in in the UK, and and. We have been lucky in that we've been able to access NHS opportunities to make sure that the, 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 the programme now has been rolled down to 12-year-old children plus, which kind of fits in reasonably neatly with our age profile as, as an institution. So thanks to the hard and consistent and constant work of our school nurse and supported by the residential team, the head of boarding, uh, and Wiley in his enrichment capacity, we've been able to 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 ensure the vaccination of a considerable number of 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 the students, which not only obviously protects them against the virus, but also 
uh, affords them easier opportunities in terms of international travel with the COVID passports and the records of vaccination being very important in the global travel landscape that we're living in at the minute. So my closing message really is 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 one of thanks for for what we've done uh, together and one of optimism and uh, you can probably tell there's a little ray of sunlight has just uh, has just broken through the clouds here in market harbor which i hope is a is a good sign as we as we move forward together the i hope that, that you're able to offer parents reassurance about the health scenario in the uk in terms of the professionalism and the rigor of the vaccination program and also i hope that you're able to offer parents the support and reassurance that they will seek if if they do seek to relocate to the uk with all the challenges that that, that entails uh if you were to walk around the school this morning you may be uh surprised i know it's it's difficult when one's in another country to know what's going on in a in a different city or location but but uh we've uh, we've reintroduced old government uh, suggestion the the wearing of masks uh, that's something that uh, that we've we're, the it, 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 and it, and it, another thing that may be difficult to 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 realize is that a lot of what we do here at the college is supported by not only the government not only the nhs but also by a number of representative institutions such as the independent schools association the boarding schools association uh the british association of international schools um so we, we feel we're not on our own we, we we do get regular support and regular updates from our representative accreditatory bodies and and, and we do feel that we're able to relay information quickly from the government uh, to to the parents. And, and let's face it, the parents are, are, are of primary importance in this because they have understandable about concerns about their children who may be being educated and cared for many thousands of miles away. So the, the, the picture here in, in Brookhouse is one of cautious optimism. Uh, I mentioned the support in terms of uh, families because i think that in this day and uh, this time planning ahead is is of utmost importance uh, and and being prepared and uh, if you're considering assisting children with application for september then really the earlier you can start the better because th because there are more hoops to go through than than, than there were previously uh so with that in mind, I, I think looking at September 2022 and beyond now, even though it's prior to Christmas, is 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 probably not a bad idea. We have also noticed, I, I, I think, globally, shifts in behaviour in certain countries that were maybe more, that, that, were, that were initially sort of more, uh, sort of focused on on locking themselves down and, and maintaining the security of their own health situation and their own borders and I, I think i think the world is the people are starting to get a bit more outward looking and, and therefore at brookhouse we've, we've we've seen a a a, a, a pretty regular uh, stream of, of applications and and i suspect that that will continue and and i suspect that probably by easter 2022 uh, the college will be uh, sort of running a little bit short on, on on places so so if you do have applications that you'd like to make for next year then then please do uh please do liaise with sarah and uh lee and uh the team in admissions as quickly as you possibly can so that's it from us i, I we didn't want to take too much for your time but we thought it was important to keep in touch and we thought it was important to update and we thought it was important to thank you for all of the efforts that you've done so far. Um, if I'm not in touch with you individually before, I, I hope you have a great Christmas and uh, look forward to working with you in 2022. And uh, just to, to finish, I, I, I'd like to remind everybody just of the importance in 2022 of, of helping the young children to try and get back on their feet as they face these challenges, which are not of their own making. And I'm sure that in the years to come, children will look back on this time as ones of challenge, but ones which were quite formative in that 
they were able to independently, proactively, collaboratively get through these difficult times together. So thank you very much for this morning. And I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And look after yourselves and we'll be in touch very soon. Thank you very much.